Hello, my name is Jakob Runge and I am heading the Climate Informatics Group at the German Aerospace Center Institute of Data Science. And today I will present to you my new method on discovering contemporaneous and lag causal relations in autocorrelated nonlinear time series data sets with the name PCMCI+. So this method comes from the conditional independence-based causal discovery framework where the goal and approach is to reconstruct a causal graph, including time lags here, from time series by testing conditional independence. So we may assume an underlying structural causal model, and our goal is to reconstruct which variables on the left-hand side are driven by which variables on the right-hand side. That is, we do not want to recover the full functional relationships here, but only which arguments appear here. This is then the causal graph. So the enabling assumptions of this framework are faithfulness, the causal Markov condition, causal sufficiency, and stationarity, depending on what data you have available. And the assumptions on nonlinearity and noise distributions, on the other end, depend on the condition independence test. So this is the nice modularity of this framework. So consider an underlying true process graph to illustrate um, what is the problem with uh, a common method here, the PC algorithm. Our goal is to reconstruct the time series graph. And in looking at the difference between these two, you see that what are cycles in the process graph can actually often be resolved in the time series graph in a time resolved manner. So the widely used method PC algorithm here has two main phases. Uh, the first is the skeleton link removal phase and we have an orientation phase. So the skeleton phase can use different condition independence tests like linear ones, partial correlation, or up to nonlinear ones like condition and mutual information. So I want to point your attention now to a particular issue of uh, condition independence testing, and that is statistical power. So the power for detecting a dependence x, uh, y given s, if it is, exists, if it's true, that depends on the sample size, of course, the significance level, the condition dimension or the cardinality of this conditioning set here, and last effect size, that is the magnitude of the test statistic in the population, so the strength of the causal dependency. Now, I would argue that sample size is given by the data set, significance level is given by the researcher or a hyperparameter, and condition dimension and the cardinality is optimized by PC. Here we address how to optimize effect size. As an example, suppose we have a true causal relationship between X and Y uh, conditional, and we have parents PX and PY. When you then condition the mutual information, for example, between X and Y on PX, that will reduce the conditional mutual information, while conditioning on PY will increase the conditional mutual information, which is the effect size. So this is easy to see from Markovity here. The problem now is that given such a link here, the PC algorithm will test this dependence with conditioning sets S going through all adjacent um, adjacencies of X and Y. And a link is removed if the minimum of all those test statistics is below the significance threshold uh, governed by this alpha significance level. So this means that if this S wanders through uh, subsets or the whole set of PX, you have a large reduction in effect size and that may lead to a removal of the link and hence a false negative. Now, false positives uh, occur due to other reasons, but before I will go through uh, a little illustration here. So. For p equals zero, the skeleton phase would not condition on anything, and we would here, for example, remove this link uh, if the effect size is too low. And here, for p equal one, we have uh, this link in the ground truth, and if we condition on the parents of x here, this blue uh, box, then this link would be removed. And we would end up with this uh, graph at this step. Now, there are two sources of false positives, that is, incorrect links. One is separating conditions have been removed in earlier steps, as we've just seen. And secondly, ill-calibrated tests due to high autocorrelation. So here, as an example, we have a wrong link from uh, x at t minus 2 to y at time t. And we would need to condition on x at t minus 1 here, but this link has already been removed, so we can't, so this will stay 
a false positive. And we can only remove other links. Also, the orientation phase then suffers from uh, wrong subsets and similar issues. So uh, just as a teaser, basically, because there's not much time, the idea behind PCMCI Plus is to improve the reli reliability of CI tests by optimizing the choice of conditioning sets to improve effect size. It has three phases. One is a lagged skeleton phase, where we have the goal to obtain a supersets of lagged parents. And as an animation, it goes like this. We only condition on the strongest associations for each P step. And this will result and converge to a set that has the true parents likely, but also may have false positives in this step. And then we initialize um, the second phase where we include all the contemporaneous links. And now we run tests iterating through contemporaneous conditions that we call MCI tests because they condition the relation between X, I and X, J on this set S, which iterates and on the B, uh, I and B, J. So which are the lacked uh, superset of parents found in the previous step. Here, the goal of S is to block contemporaneous paths and the goal of the Bs is to block lacked paths. And also as an animation here, for example, for this link here, we condition on the blue parents and that already increases effect size because that's the parents of Y. While for higher orders here, we remove links. We condition also on contemporaneous parents and on the lag parents, as you can see here. So we would remove this false link. And last the orientation phase is then similar to the PC algorithm. In the paper, you find further considerations on consistency, order independence, the conjecture that the effect size is always greater than that of the PC algorithm and that MCI tests are well calibrated. Closing with some numerical experiments, uh, you see here uh, in a comparison with the Granger causality and PC on residuals and Valingam, a method that assumes non-Gaussianity. So our model setup here also has non-Gaussian links. So shown on the left are adjacency results. So we have high true positive rate for contemporaneous links as uh, hoped. We have controlled false positives and for recall of contemporaneous links, we get high recall with increasing autocorrelation while all other methods suffer from high autocorrelation. Persistence is um, increasing for all methods. So this is one example of many found in the full paper. Concluding, the PCMCI method uh, published previously uh, worked on lagged links, and now we have a method for contemporaneous links. Please visit the perspective article and the causality inference benchmark platform. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.